to the Not Your Mama's History YouTube channel. My name is Chaney McKnight, and we are going to revisit the head wraps of Black women in 18th and 19th century North America. This video is sponsored by Burnley and Trowbridge, a purveyor of historically accurate, exclusively researched and designed textiles, notions, and accessories, including the reproduction kerchiefs you will be seeing in this tutorial. Leading educators in the historic costume community through their hands-on workshops and YouTube channel. Thank you, Burnley and Trowbridge. This video was filmed at King Manor Museum. King Manor was home to Rufus King, a framer of the Constitution and an anti-slavery politician. This year marks the house's 120th anniversary as a public museum, which uses anti-slavery history to teach critical thinking. Please note that the information in this 20-minute video is taken from an hour-long lecture. If you're interested in learning more about the head wraps of African women in North America, please follow me on social media so you can find out when I'll be giving the full lecture near you. Today we're going to learn about the history of head wraps for Black women here in North America. We're going to learn that from Jonathan Square. He's a fashion historian and he runs a YouTube channel uh, called Fashioning the Self. He specializes in talking about uh, Afro-diasporic uh, fashion um, history, and I'm really excited to see what he's got cooking. Then we're going to actually delve into some 18th century head wraps, um, specifically of African women here in North America. We'll have about nine styles for you. Well, it's important to remember that the head wrap is what might be called an African retention. An African retention is a cultural element that has remained in the culture of Afro-diasporic Blacks. And, um, you know, you can see throughout the diaspora, whether it's in Latin America or in the Caribbean or the United States, there are cultural elements that have remained from West African traditions. And you don't have to look too far to find them. It's in language, it's in food, and most importantly, it's in the way we dress. And the most obvious example is the head wrap. So of course, West Africa, there's head wrapping traditions. Fabric is highly valued in West African cultures. And that tradition was carried over to the new world amongst African Americans and the African diaspora broadly. So the head wrap is what we might call an African retention or an African cultural trait that has remained in Afro-diasporic cultures. Um, and of course, head wrapping, there are head wrapping traditions around the world, whether it's in Europe or Asia or, you know, amongst Native American groups. But there's also a head wrapping tradition amongst African slash Afro-diasporic communities as well. And this takes on both utilitarian, but also decorative purposes. When I say utilitarian, I'm referring to head wrapping as a form of protection, whether it's dirt or the wind or the sun or sweat. The people of African descent were wrapping their head to protect it from the elements. And it also took on decorative purposes. And when it took on decorative purposes, purposes, it was used as a, a fashionable item, as a form of sartorial display. And as a decorative item, it became more poachable, more appropriable. And this is when you see examples of white people appropriating elements of afro diaspora dress, particularly the head wrap. Um, you can see a number of examples of wealthy white Creole women appropriating the head wrap as a fashion item. And we think of cultural appropriation as being a 20th slash 21st century phenomenon, but there's examples of it that reach back, you know, to the 19th century and even into the 18th century. And so there's a long, deep-seated history to cultural appropriation. It's not just the Kardashians or, you know, other celebrities that have done it. It's been happening for two, two centuries at least. 
hard to map out um, different styles of head wraps in the 18th and 19th century. Unlike hairstyles where we have uh, lots of portraits of wealthy white women from year to year. So we can see how styles change just from one year to the next. We can see how styles change across countries or within countries from household to household. We don't really have that large sampling size for head wraps. So I depend a lot on paintings and drawings from the West Indies um, and from Louisiana. And it's such a small size of paintings I can draw from, from North America. So unfortunately, most of the paintings and drawings I'm basing my hairstyles on, my head wrap styles on, are actually from the West Indies. But we have some um, understanding that, especially in the early 18th century, a lot of enslaved people are coming from the West Indies to places like Charleston and Virginia and even New York. So um, it would make sense that styles would be taken from the West Indies and brought to North America. Also, um, these are the same people. They are from the same ethnic groups um, that are being sent to the West Indies. These are same people that are being brought here to North America as well. So I have it on good authority that most likely some of the head wraps that you see in the West Indies you will see in North America. So if you are a living history person that is a purist, meaning that you need completely accurate head wrap in the same region on the exact plantation where you're interpreting, I ain't got nothing for you. So good luck with that. But um, through my seven years of intense research on head wraps, um, this tutorial is what I've come up with. And um, in my last tutorial, I was in the infancy of my research and I found out a lot of things that I had wrong. Um, for example, the long square rectangle of fabric, um, most likely that was not the case. Um, most of uh, the head wraps that they had probably were kerchiefs um, and tied into head wraps, but I'm sure there were some rectangle head wraps, but uh, most of them were, were square kerchiefs or even triangles. If you are looking for a place to start and researching um, historical garb of enslaved persons, I definitely think you need to start with runaway ads. They're so descriptive because of, of course their enslaver wants to retrieve their property. So they're going to be as accurate as possible with all the things they have. With that said, if you want descriptions of head wraps, it's probably not going to be the best to look at runaway ads um, because they're not saying, and then she tied her head wrap a little bit beside her ear. That's not going to happen. Uh, so you're really looking for paintings and drawings, um, but you also want to learn about the history of these people. Um, when I first started, the worst advice someone gave me was that um, black women were wearing just the poorer version of what white women were wearing. That is the absolute worst advice I ever got in my career. Uh, but in reality, there's a completely different style stemming from 3,000 ethnic groups that have thousands of ways of doing their hair of scarification, of wrapping their heads. It's all being boiled down to just a few cultures um, within North America. Um, I'm hoping that Black women make a direct connection with their ancestors. It's really exciting. So you can also pick up two of my favorite books. Um, when I started, um, I started with this book, uh, Stalin, uh, African American Expressive Culture from its beginnings to the Zoot Soup. And that is from Shane White, um, as well as um, Graham White. And it's so, oh, 
so good. Um, it really um, explains a lot. But recently, I've really been getting into uh, Slaves to Fashion. I think I've read it like two times now. It's a really good source to kind of understand um, where these people are coming from. Uh, when they came here, um, what did they have? And how did they infuse their culture into the dress? And then of course, um, I'm gonna do some shameless promotion. Might I suggest you pick up uh, the American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty. So you can learn how to make the cushions to actually get some of the height on some of those head wraps. As far as head coverings go in North America, most of the images we have of Black women, uh, they have no head coverings at all, whether they're working in um, a field or working in a house or working with children. Um, we don't see as many head wraps as we do in the 19th century. I don't know what that means. Usually images are staged, so because of how involved paintings and drawings are, uh, a lot of times they're staged. Um, maybe the person isn't even in the room, or sometimes they're not even alive when it's painted. Um, so I can't tell you for sure what it means that uh, the, most of the images we have of African American women during this period, um, they don't have any type of head covering. But um, from my experience, um, I wear, sometimes wear a cap. And this cap that I have on, if I can get it to come down, this is called a lafette. We have lafettes here. Um, and this cap was made by um, Fashion Revisited USA, and they are on um, they are on Etsy, and I'll put a link down below. But it, theirs usually fit my head quite nicely, and I think it looks really cute. Uh, sometimes I will wear a cap, but most of the time not. So our first style is just this. <laughs> Nothing at all. I wear, my hair is twisted. Um, it's in a protective hairstyle. Um, and this is the base that goes underneath my kerchief. Now, a lot of times I wear uh, some type of wig cap or something underneath my um, head scarves or head wraps just because it's cotton on hair and it can cause a little friction if you're wearing it every day. Uh, your edges could be in trouble. But today, I'll go naked. <laughs> um, so the first headscarf um, is taken from um, the old plantation uh, attributed to John Ross, I'm sorry, John Rose. We don't know a lot about this um, painting, uh, but we do see women who have their heads uncovered um, and some are wearing uh, very simple kerchiefs. Um, so I have here, this one is actually just um, fabric that I got from Berlin and Trowbridge years ago. It's a linen. And I just cut it up <laughs> and it's uh, just barely there piece of fabric. I've seen that as well. So uh, for the two most common um, prints that you will find in runaway ads, um, really three. Um, so the first one is the um, linen madras um, and this beautiful red and blue wool. Um, I see this mentioned in runaway ads a lot as well as the red spotted. Um, so I'm going to do a very simple, common one um, using this red and blue wool, as well as the blue check. And if you look at this, it's so light. Kind of triangle 
fact that happens in the front here where you see how it does this. You see that a lot in images. And for these, I actually picked out my hair a bit um, because in some of the images, especially for the one that's loose in the back, a fuller look. So um, also just by looking at images of some of these women with no headscarves on, I see a lot of fro type situations going on. Uh, so I picked out my hair and I'm going to try um, the loose, what I call the loose back. Now we're gonna move to more free women of color of means head wraps. Um, and so I'm taking, I'm looking at two different um, head wrap styles that I found in the West Indies. Um, and I absolutely love them. Um, the first one, I'm gonna start with um, this huge kerchief slash shawl. Um, and it's red and green, and it looks almost like um, the kerchief um, in the image. And I call this the horse tail. And so uh, you may have noticed that I have added a bit of extra hair to my head um, to kind of get that height going. So, um, so some of my friends who have really long natural hair, uh, like Nastasia, um, you will be able to do this no problem. People like me, I add a little bit of hair or I take a kerchief and I turn it into a donut and then I uh, pin that on top of my head. Or you can look in the American Duchess uh, Guide to Beauty, um, the book, and you can look for the cushions, the 18th century hair cushion. It is perfect uh, size. And make it just a little bit uh, smaller so it can uh, fit perfectly on the head. Um, and it gives you that perfect height. Now, I am going to tie what I like to call the horse tail.
actually um, going to be one that is very common throughout the West Indies. Um, and I think it's just absolutely beautiful. It has a lot of height to it, um, but it also is very contained, which I really like. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. questions please leave them down below let me know which was your favorite head wrap um, also um, if anyone out there has any images or of 18th and 19th century black women in America um, please feel free to email them to uh, not your mama's history at gmail.com I plan on trying my best to come up with some type of timeline and map of where and when head wraps showed up in America. It'd be really cool for that to happen. And I think I need um, the help of everyone to kind of uh, bring all this together. Uh, thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and uh, mash that bell. A special thanks to our patrons over at Patreon. Thank you for your support.